So good afternoon. Uh, my name is Micha Breakstone. I'm a co-founder and president at Chorus AI, and it's a, a real pleasure being here and uh, presenting to you guys. Just need to find my clicker. There we are. Um, so let me walk you through about, a bit about our history at Chorus. Uh, so we were founded in mid-2015, raised our, our early seed of $6 million, and spent the next uh, year or so building and developing our AI stack and our product. Uh, we delved deep into AI, built our own speech recognition engines, our own machine learning models, and so on and so forth. Um, around mid-2016, uh, we, estab we started establishing our sales and marketing. Uh, 2017, we already raised our Series A of $16 million and started selling in earnest. And 2018 uh, was all about growth. We grew revenue by about two and a half times, uh, closed over 200 paying customers, uh, analyzed uh, above 4 million uh, conversations, and uh, closed our $33 million round B. Uh, 2019 has again all been about growth. Uh, to date, uh, less than half a year, or around a half a year into 2019, we've more than doubled the amount of conversations we've analyzed. Uh, we're all about growth now, and um, we're introducing some more cool AI components as well. Uh, so just to recap, uh, over 200 paying customers in 2018, more than 4 million conversations um, analyzed to date, and over 80 employees, where our R&D is based mostly in Tel Aviv, um, headquarters in San Francisco, and another sales division out of Boston. Um, so why analyze conversations to begin with? There are really three main reasons that you want to analyze uh, conversations and uh, sales conversations specifically. The first is you want to actually understand what differentiates your top speakers from the rest of your speakers, uh, from, your, from your top reps from the rest of your reps. So if you understand what your top reps are doing better uh, than the rest of your reps, you're obviously able to uh, clone your closers, as we say, and uh, allow the, the lower performing reps to get better and better. A second component is, or a second reason you want to analyze conversations is you want to cut down on ramp time. So if you're able to understand what the best conversations are to help teach new, new uh, reps learning the job, you're able to cut dramatically on ramp time. And the third reason you want to analyze conversation is approximately 80% of your calls disappear into thin air. Nobody really knows why you lose them, why, why the deals are lost. Uh, being able to, you can listen into a call and understand why a specific deal was lost, but being able to do so at scale uh, would be impossible without a, a platform to analyze uh, conversations automatically. Uh, so indeed, we've built a, a conversation intelligence platform. What the platform does, what our uh, product does is records conversations, transcribes them in real time, and surfaces insights. Um, and we do so with our own proprietary uh, automatic speech recognition engines, our own machine uh, mo um, learning models. Basically, what we do is we deconstruct conversations into their core semantic and phonetic building blocks uh, to understand exactly what is happening at every moment in a conversation. So for example, what pain points were discussed, what risks are for the deal, what the risks are for the deal, what topics were discussed. Um, so just to, to recap, we record a conversation. We're able to identify the moment a conversation is, is happening on um, uh, you know, a video calling conference uh, platform. We transcribe it using our own speech recognition so that the accuracy, the precision is extremely high. And we analyze conversations in real time, surfacing, surfacing the topics, even if the topics themselves are not pre-known. So if there's a new feature, a new product, a new positioning of the product, we're able to pick that up in real time using our AI. Um, and uh, with all of this data, we uh, enrich the CRM. We send all of this data and overlay it over uh, the various different fields in, in the CRM. Um, in addition, uh, ab above or except for the basics, we also have additional AI components. So we're able to analyze themes across different conversations. Uh, we're able to curate playlists for uh, for specific reps, completely personalize them. So if a rep is, if we detect a rep is having trouble with um, objection handling, we can automatically curate a playlist that is tailored for him or her. Um, if they're having a problem with discounting, the same, we can automatically detect conversations that do a better job and, uh, and curate these playlists for them. 
we have uh, scorecards that we're able to learn from how to coach better. Um, and we're able to measure sales processes um, and their adoption across different stages and, and uh, across time. Uh, we have some absolutely phenomenal customers that we work with. Again, over 200 paying customers to date. This is a, a, a very small amount of them, but some great customers like Adobe, Outreach, Envision, Zoom, MongoDB. And what we're able to do for our customers is pretty phenomenal. Uh, we're able to reduce RAM time by up to 50%. Uh, for example, Zoom is such a customer. Um, and we're able to increase sales rates depending on the stage and when they come to us by up to 30%. So some really cool stuff. Apart from that, we have uh, integrations with uh, many different types of components. So for CRM, we have Salesforce. Uh, for collaboration, we have Slack. For email and calendar, we do everything from G Suite to a Microsoft Exchange and Outlook. Uh, video conferencing, so all the main players, uh, so Zoom, Uber Conference, GoToMeeting, uh, Ring Central, Skype for Business. Uh, and in terms of dialers, uh, all, the, all the usual suspects, so Ring Central, InsideSales.com, uh, Truly, Sales Loft, and so on and so forth. Um, so the remainder of the talk, I want to talk a little about the insights we were able to, to surface. And there are two types of insights, generally speaking. Uh, the first type of insights are uh, company-specific insights. For specific customers, we're able to analyze conversations and let them surface um, and understand what's happening. And there are more generic or cross-industry insights. So let me start from some cool cross-industry insights. So we've identified that, for example, top reps, top performing reps, when they are negotiating contracts, they use a much more collaborative language. So they use words like we, us, together, versus uh, less uh, high-performing reps that will use things um, much closer to I and you. So for example, instead of saying, I will send over the contract for you to review, it will be something like, we'll send over the contract and we can work on it together. Um, and creating a much more collaborative, friendly, empathetic kind of uh, uh, environment. So that's a really cool correlation we found for top-performing reps. Um, another one is in terms of questions. If you had to guess for a second whether top performing reps ask more or uh, less questions than low performing reps, think for a second what, would you, what, what you would guess. So most people guess that top performing reps ask more questions than lower performing reps. Uh, the truth is they actually ask on average about the same amount of, um, of questions. The biggest difference between them is the type of questions that, is be that are being asked. So top performing reps ask open-ended questions, questions that elicit better, uh, more response, more talking from the prospect, help uncover more of the pain they're experiencing and create a sense of empathy. Uh, so it's not the amount of questions we found that differentiates top performing reps from low performing reps, but rather um, the type of questions. Uh, and finally, uh, another, another cool point is action items. So top performing reps set uh, the same amount of action items, but they set the action items and next steps much earlier on in the conversation. So when they reach the end of the conversation, basically they're just uh, wrapping up and, and recapping what has previously been agreed on. Uh, I see I'm almost out of time, so I'll run through some customer insights. So we found, for example, uh, for Zoom, uh, when they started talking about um, uh, their positioning, their vision, why Eric Yuang founded Zoom uh, and his mission, their sales went up. When Outreach positioned themselves um, as a competitive, in a competitive way versus sales loft, they started selling more. Um, another company, in, um, uh, Inside Squared, uh, they were leaving money on the table. They were offering discounts way too early in a deal without it actually affecting the, the result of the deal. So those are things that we're able to surface automatically for our customers and help them improve their sales uh, results. Um, I'll walk through a few other things, cool things we've done for customers. So for a company called Playster, we helped reduce um, shadowing time by up to 70% by automatically uh, curating uh, playlists of what to listen to per specific rep, uh, help them coach uh, better on a specific topic. For Zoom, we were able to reduce RAM time by up to 50% by automatically curating playlists for new reps to uh, listen to as they join. Um, ooh. For House Call Pro, we were able to increase sales rate by approximately 10%, uh, and we were able to do that by identifying winning talk tracks and uh, disseminating them across organizations. 
Uh, and for Guru, we were able to shorten sales cycles by creating an alignment between the various different sub-teams of sales, sales engineering, and product, so they were all more aligned and could collaborate better within the organization. So that's what I have for today. Thank you very much for listening, and um, great to be here. Thanks. Thank you.